Good afternoon. Today we celebrate the vigil of the third Sunday of Advent. There will be a special collection for the Retirement Fund for Religious. Please use the envelopes marked for this collection in the pews, and we thank you for your generosity. We continue to remind you to please turn off all electrical devices. This Mass is being offered for all of us and our families, and especially for June Harper, Anthony E. Zuccardo, Mr. and Mrs. Anthony L. Zuccardo, Judge Patrick Schott, Sarah Champagne, Mr. and Mrs. Arthur Monts, Janet Roussel Abbey, Ed Edmund Brignat Jr., Jack Pilata, Mary Ross Garage, Randy Eckstein, Marilyn and Joe Elmar, Leonard Paul Xavier, Jamie Lazaro Smith, Father Paul Hart, Special Intentions of Oliver Simpson, Birthday Intentions of Julie Robinson, The Full Healing of Jim Ward, The Full Healing of Gail Lambert, The Full Healing Special intentions for Eugenie Torrens, special family intentions for Mark Capel and Ryan Curtis Our gathering hymn can be found in the red gathering hymn. I don't think we're quite ready to begin, but if you'd like to get the number ready, it's number 344. Number 344, and now we're ready. 344 of the red gathering hymn. On Jordan's bank, let us all rise as we lift up our voices to the Lord. <coughs>
God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble, Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm 
because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What, do you go out, what did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing or in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. So our preaching here at this church in the first two weeks of Advent focused on uh, the virtues of hope and then faith, respectively. And today we'll focus on the gift of joy next Sunday we'll focus on the gift of peace. And we focus on joy today because the third Sunday of Advent is called Gaudate Sunday or rejoice. That's a Latin word for rejoice. So it's named so because uh, rejoice is the first word of the entrance antiphon for this Mass. Now the entrance antiphon and the communion antiphons are options to be used when the Mass is not sung, when there are songs for the Mass. So an entrance antiphon can say when the priest is entering, and a communion antiphon after he receives communion. And today, the optional entrance antiphon is taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians, and it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. The Lord is near. And as we'll shortly see, St. Paul was an apostle of joy. We all want joy. We were created in a special way, with 
a deep longing for joy and happiness. You could even say that everything we do is geared towards gaining joy, the joy we desperately desire. Even when we sin, it's joy that we're secretly looking for. Think about it. We turn towards something that we think will give us lasting happiness, and sometimes we do so in sin. We sin because we think that it'll make us happy, not because we think it'll make us miserable, although it always does. So how often do we focus on what we joy, what we joyfully desire? We're given this gift of Advent to do so. So we refocus today with a deep longing joy for God. But how do we concrete, concretely do this? How do we take steps to do it? In his book, Living with Joy, author Chris Stefanik gives nine rules for living with joy. And I'll go through just a few of them briefly today. But before I do so, I think it's important for us to understand exactly what joy is. Spiritual joy is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Just as good trees produce good fruit, when we're living in lives of faith in God and Jesus, we produce good fruit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. St. Thomas Aquinas says that natural joy, joy, not spiritual joy, but natural joy is a fruit of love. It comes from being in the presence of someone we love or knowing that someone we love is doing well. Think about it, spending joyful time, uh, spending time with those we love, family members, it just brings us joy, natural joy. Spiritual joy, on the other hand, is experienced by loving God. It's the fruit of charity. Spiritual joy is the fruit of the theological virtue of charity. It's experienced through our sharing in God's goodness, and we experience deep, abiding spiritual joy when we live our, li when we live our lives participating in God's goodness and by imitating Christ. Now, because spiritual joy is based on our relationship with God and not on how we feel, we can have spiritual joy deep within, deep within us, even when the surface is battered by the storms of life, by sadness, struggles, and failures. So what are some steps of experiencing more joy in our lives, more deep spiritual joy? The first, I think, is the most important, to live in gratitude. Social science and psychology have repeatedly shown that those who live in gratitude live happily. But as Christians, our gratitude goes beyond mere happiness. St. Paul says to the Philippians, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then he says, then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. When we are thankful to God, we are joyful. But unfortunately, gratitude, it doesn't come naturally to us. We have to take concrete steps to be grateful. We can do this by beginning and ending each day with naming specific things that day we were thankful for. We can, um, and then once we've kind of got that down, being thankful for the good things in our lives, it's a challenge to be thankful for even the tough things, to thank God for those difficult times to see them as opportunities to grow in trust in Him and to grow in virtue, of patience, and love. The next rule for living joyfully is to take time to rest and be silent. It's nearly impossible to be silent in this world today, but we have to fight for it, and we reclaim a sense of sacred silence in our lives. Several times throughout sacred scripture, we read about how Jesus withdrew by Himself to pray in silence. When the disciples return from their mission of healing and casting out demons, Jesus says, come away with me for a little while. He takes them for silence to be recreated, rejuvenated. Practically speaking, we can gain silence in our lives by putting down our phones, by stepping away from screens, by resisting the temptation to constantly be connected and to be constantly in the know. We can create times of rest by rejecting the lie 
that we always have to be actively doing something. In the Gospel of John, Jesus invites us, invites us to abide in Him, to remain in His love so that our joy may be complete. This is really hard to do without rest and silence. Next, we live joyfully when we love ourselves and love others. Jesus says you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Quite often, those we have the most trouble loving and forgiving are ourselves. The truth is that God loves us more than we can ever know or imagine. So what are some practical ways that we can love ourselves healthily? It's really hard to love ourselves if we don't imagine ourselves as loved by God and as lovable. It's the voice of the evil spirit that accuses us and tells us that we're not good enough, that we're doing everything wrong. It's the voice of the Holy Spirit that tells us we are beloved children of God and that in His eyes we are loved no matter what. I know that in my own life, if I make a mistake or forget something, that Satan usually sends a fierce attack of lies. And I have to fight back. I have to fight back by reminding myself that I am loved by God despite my mistakes, despite what I may forget. Sometimes I have to fight a lot harder than others. Sometimes the relief comes more immediately. But the light of Christ always wins when I persevere in believing His love. We also love ourselves when we, when we identify these lies of the evil spirit and we repeatedly remind ourselves that God loves us. When we love ourselves.